what a Nigerian native would think going through this jungle section here of Walt Disney Anna. Well, it's pop art in a yard wide. We are now moving into another dark, dank cavern, making a big right-hand turn. And ahead, I see an enormous ballet of slightly drunken penguins. Uh, I'm not sure it's Pepsi-Cola they've been drinking, but they are swinging, and it's all part of this peculiar... Uh, I guess the word really would be uh, almost surrealistic or anthropomorphological world of Walt Disney. There is an enormous plastic dragon holding a golden umbrella over his head. The air is becoming icy cold now, and as we move into the Arctic section of the world of Walt Disney, we wave a fond farewell. Who knows where we will land next? Be careful of that Mexican volcano. It is about to erupt. And now I am standing in front of the IBM people wall. Under the shade of the stainless steel trees that through the beneficence of IBM provide a little shade out here in this great vast wilderness of machine metal and sun known as the New York 1964 World's Fair. This people wall, by the way, fulfills a deep psychological urge that mankind has always been prone to, and that is the desire to return, if at all possible, to the prenatal state. Uh, the enormous IBM egg is resting above us in just a few moments. This vast throng of people who have come from far and wide are about to be swallowed up by an egg they're providing a deep psychological sense of satisfaction as IBM, through its vast technical resources, has finally made possible man's eventual return to his pre-beginning state. Now, in just a few moments, uh, I, I believe the people wall is about to ascend. <laughs> it's a wild sight, let me tell you. Uh, it, it's as though you're looking at some great canvas painting with thousands of Grant Wood faces peering out at you. You can see the, the, the look of the solemn Baptist. You can see the look of the angry protester. You can see the look of the, of the sullen man who gave up years ago to, to a defiant wife. You can see children hanging there. In short, you are looking at a cross-section of all of mankind about to be swallowed up by great mother IBM. Uh, just outside of the pavilion here, the fountains are going full blast. The American flag is flying high, the sun is beaming down, and there is a peculiar air of fearful expectancy among the people here who are on the people wall. Somehow the, the, the concept of a people wall reminds me of China and the great 10,000 mile wall where millions of peasants gave up their blood to provide the sustenance of that great symbol of antiquity. We here in America are not to be outdone by the older civilizations. And we're moving forward. In just a few moments now, the people wall will rise. The egg is ready. It is yawning above us. And in just a few moments, this great mass, this moiling throng of humanity will be swallowed up and become the veritable yoke in a great seed of praise to Americans' technical prowess and its superiority in the field of business machines. Uh, let's see. Now, there goes a... There goes a uh, there goes an airplane on its way over to uh, LaGuardia. There goes a helicopter overhead. And now the machinery, here we hear the sound of a bell now. This is very significant. The people are tensing now. The stainless steel trees are rustling quietly in the fall breeze. I don't know whether or not they've arranged for the foliage on the stainless steel trees here to change with the seasons. But I suspect that uh, next year after all the bugs are ironed out of the fair that might probably be accomplished the uh, fountains are rising to a crescendo now there is a note of restlessness now i detect among the people in the people wall it is as though they are being held from the egg itself this is a period of tenseness as many of you who go to analysts know the business of attempting to go back to your origins is not easy it's always attendant with all kinds of problems of one kind or another. I see 
High atop the people wall, a delegation, but appears to be a small Iowa town. Their box, their box brownies are clicking furiously, and the sound of film being expended is is one of the more comforting sounds out here at the World's Fair. I suspect that underneath it all, uh, the Eastman Kodak people have a hand in many of the vistas. Uh, that's one thing that must be said about the fair. They have cleverly marked all around the fair what they call picture spots that have all been pre-composed so that all the proper things are shown in the pictures when you get home. There are no drunks, by the way, lying under benches in the picture spots here at the fair. I can hear now... Yes, yes, here is a, is a, is a, what appears to a mechanical man. This is a mechanical man who has been lowered from the shell of the egg, and he is now suspended uh, in a strange mechanical contrivance that looks somewhat like a gas burner hanging over the edge of the people wall. The peop this is the information machine that looks really, uh, what it's called out here is the IBM egg. Nobody is listening to him, by the way, as they sit there. That's interesting to watch. As the pitch man tells them about it, they all sit and scratch and look. That's one good thing you got to say about people. They're not so easily, <laughs> they're not as easily led as the great pitch men of the world seem to think. They're just sitting there resting their bunions for a while and uh, digesting their hot dogs, and they're planning on the pizza immediately following the show in the information egg here at the IBM Center. Here they go now. Now watch this. This is a great sight. I say don't go into the IBM show. Just stand and watch the people wall rise. It's fantastic. Here they go. Listen. Hear the sound? in the eyes as the people rise into the great yoke of Mother IBM. The breeze is blowing coolly now through the stainless steel foliage and the people wall is slowly rising out of sight to display a gigantic American flag hanging symbolically over our electronically controlled fountains. Ave, ave, and peace be with thee. Enjoy your ride into the great, great yoke of the universe. Goodbye, O oh people, Wall. We shall return to thee on the morrow. La da dia, la da 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 dia. And now, as the gentle sound of the transcribed music emitting from the many-fold colored waters of the fountain of the planets, we are standing in the sunlight next to the Clairol exhibit, where thousands of short, fat ladies, girdles creaking, stand in line under the searing hot sun to try their hand at six very colored wigs. How will you look as a redhead? Or a blonde? Or a brunette? Or a ravishing dark-eyed, flashing girl of old Spain. See yourself in a new hair color, in a new hairdo. And above the Clairol exhibit, there is a garland of what appears to be stainless steel, tastefully painted irises, with pennants of a medieval hue floating high over them, and back silhouetted against it is a revolving symbol of America's simplest five-cent candy, the Lifesaver. <laughs> now, oh, by the way, right next to the Clairol exhibit, I don't know whether it's, a, it's, a, it's done deliberately or not, is the Scott Paper exhibit. And uh, they have many products. But uh, this, uh, this is, this is uh, one of, one, again, one of the more interesting sides of the fair, to watch these women standing in long lines here. And they have a big sign that says, No Men Allowed. Well, I don't know many men who would even care to come. Although I'm sure that there are a few that have tried to crash the line. In fact, I know that some have actually gone through, but that's another story. It's the clear all exhibit. And uh, I'm curious, uh, this, this thing that immediately occurs to me here is, uh, this is probably closer right here, uh, this, this kind of uh, feminine mystique and this gigantic feminine uh, egotism that is shown here at the clear all exhibit is probably more significant as an exhibit than anything else that I've seen yet at the fair as a commentary on our culture that I don't see a, an exhibit that says men try yourself on a new toupee 
How would you look with sideburns? Men, how would you look with a bristling set of, of George Bernard Shaw whiskers? No, this is, this is a, a female world out here. And uh, I suspect that, that uh, an archaeologist looking at this exhibit, digging up this one, a thousand years from now, would realize immediately that he has uncovered an actual religious temple. And uh, <laughs> you can hear the music building up in the background now. And we're looking out over the uh, lagoon and the fountain of the planets. The women continue to move in in a long, solemn, totally mirthless line. This is a line that is a very serious line. Charlie is being called. Uh, God knows where Charlie is. And actually, only God cares. And so now, once again, we return to our surrealistic tour of this peculiar pop art exhibit known as the New York World's Fair. By the way, one thing you can see from this side, this lady's side of the lagoon, which is the Clairol exhibit, you can see a direct shot to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States demograph or demograph, as I heard a guy from Iowa pronounce it the other day. It's an enormous scoreboard just to tell you how bad the population is getting in the United States. And that, coupled with the Clairol exhibit, gives you some idea of the, of the effectiveness of the fertility rite that is undergone out here. And so we hope to God you find Charlie, honey. We are now moving on to another one of the areas of the fair. 